was your journey like after Humber and after your four-year programs that you did and your motivational but discouraging little segment you had with the professor like yeah. what happens and like where does that take you now yeah well <laughs> after Humber um even like my time at Humber was really fun. I met like a lot of dope people mm -hmm. um, that like not only helped me out in the program, but like were great connections. Right. Um, while I was in Humber for my last, I guess, year there, I did an internship at MTV. So that was kind of like a really cool thing that I got to do. That's it. Um, and that was dope in terms of, I guess, creating content. I worked for like a blog portion that they were doing. Mm -hmm. So I created content weekly, uh, kind of like seeing that schedule that again helped me with how I kind of create my foundation for my blog now. Um, and that really helped me out. And then after that, I knew I wanted to do something creative, but more something with social media. So I remember that kind of somewhere I was like, I took the summer off, I guess, but then after that, I mm -hmm. really buckled down and like was looking for a job in my field. Mm -hmm. um, I was really set on getting a job downtown. That mm -hmm. was my mindset, that was my goal, that's what I wanted. I just wanted a job downtown. Uh, so I found a job that was downtown, like kind of the heart of downtown. Mm -hmm. um, it was a contract job and it was part-time, so it wasn't like a big commitment, but um, it was kind of like a mortgage broker firm. Oh. And that was the base of the job, but I was doing running their social media. Oh, okay. So Just basically, they had kind of a I don't know if you call it an app or like a service mm -hmm. where they would post on behalf of like a mortgage broker um, on their social media and post like um, articles or anything based on the housing market. Right. So I would spend my day in the office looking online for like any article, relevant art article based on like the housing market, mortgage brokers, anything like that. I would come up with a one-two caption that fitted a mortgage broker mm -hmm. and then I would put it into our service or our algorithm so that on their posts, it would just automatically schedule and post for them. Right. So on their side or on someone else's side, it would look like that person is posting, even though mm -hmm. it was me that was like doing it because of the service we had. Right. right. So that was the job I had. Um, again, I wanted it because I wanted a job downtown. But why downtown specifically? Um, that's just like the lifestyle that I wanted. Like I never really, oh, okay. I yeah. never really like moved to like outside for college or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted like a job downtown and that's kind of like what I wanted. Um, I worked there for like a couple years or a couple months, sorry. Um, and then after that, I really just wasn't enjoying it because it was debilitating my creativity. Mm -hmm. Like I, not that I had a lot of arguments with my manager, <laughs> but just a lot of my articles and my headlines were not catered to the audience. So okay. they were great captions. They would have been captivating for maybe a younger audience or another audience, mm -hmm. but specifically a mortgage broker, like they wouldn't, it wasn't like a realistic wording for them, I guess. Right, right, right. So um, I actually got let go and it was like a blessing in disguise because it was like at the end of, I guess, I think it was the end of 2014 mm -hmm. or 2015. Um, and then I was like stuck again. I was like, damn, like it's a new year. Like, what am I going to do? Like, what kind of direction am I going to go into? Yeah. And at that time too, I had taken maybe my Instagram more seriously. So during okay. college, like I just did not have time to be posting mm -hmm. as many times. Yeah. And if I did, it was like a one, two, like, yo, catch this, <laughs> catch my fit, you know? Mm -hmm. So I didn't have a lot of time. So after I finally graduated, I took Instagram more seriously. Um, in terms of like planning posts and yeah. like uh, maybe plan like doing like shoots and like planning fits and stuff like that right. and then posting that. Um, so I did kind of have an audience at that time. And I remember um, maybe three or two of my friends were like, Matt, like you should get into blogging. Mm -hmm. um, and at that time I remember I was like, I don't, like I wasn't into it. Yeah. I was like, I don't think blogging is for me. Um, I don't think that's something I'd want to be into. And they kept convincing me. They're like, I mm -hmm. think you could kill it. Like, I think you'd be really great at it. Like, um, especially like in Toronto, like you're so creative, things like that. And at that time, I actually remember thinking about it and thinking, I don't, at the time I remember thinking about it and thinking, I don't know if I could blog because I don't even see any like <laughs> black Canadian men bloggers, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I don't see mm -hmm. any black guys like talking about fashion online, like yeah. I don't think that would be something I could get into. But then I also kind of like changed that mindset and it also helped me get into it more. Right. Um, not only for like representation for other people and like myself, mm -hmm. but also um, kind of like that was a better niche, I guess, because it right. wasn't, not that it wasn't competition, but it was like, there's not a lot of people in this field that 
are doing what I'm considering. Right. So I might as well get into it. One, because like a lot more people will recognize me because if I'm the only one doing it, then that's kind of like exactly. less competition kind of in a way. Yeah. But also for representation, because again, I didn't see any black brothers doing that for mm -hmm. myself to inspire me. Nice. So nice. it's great that now that I'm doing this and even some of my followers will message me. Like mm -hmm. I had a lot of people messaging me saying like, Yo, you really inspire me. Like, I love what you're doing with your like That's fits dope. and your blog That's and things. Dope. And they're black as well. And they yeah. could be. Um, in the US or they could be in Nigeria like they're kind of like all over the world mm. So that's great that even not only in Toronto, but everywhere they kind of see that representation So I love that that didn't stop me from doing it and kind of to backtrack uh, it's funny that I also got into blogging because uh, thinking about it after it was also something that I realized I was meant to do but like mm. didn't know That's why I remember saying like life has a funny way of working, right? So I remember in middle school, um, that's when I first kind of started getting into social media, like MySpace, like literally the first one <laughs> out the gate. Yeah, MySpace. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I remember being super into MySpace and in middle school as well, I also had my own little blog. It was like, um, we're around the same age. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. I don't know if you remember Pixo. Yeah. I yeah. Do. So okay. Pixel was like a big, like make your own website thing. Yeah. Yeah. I got so that. that's kind of the first website that I made. And mm -hmm. I was like the black iCarly on there. Like Jeez. I would upload <laughs> all, I would upload all the time. <laughs> I would basically put like monthly, like not journals, but like blog posts being like, this is what I did this month. Mm -hmm. Like, and it'd just be about like elementary school, like yeah, kind yeah. of embarrassing, <laughs> but I would upload that all the time. I would upload YouTube videos on there. Mm -hmm. I would like HTML games on there. Oh, like I would have like in. my, yeah. Like, that was what I spent my energy on, like right. kind of frequently, but like as frequently as you had computer time, like, Correct, you know, yeah. like, so that's what I was doing. And looking back at it, like, that's what I enjoyed doing. Like mm. I could see that that kind of like sparked getting into social media, like coding, like doing things like that and being creative and like editing. Mm -hmm. So it's funny that now it's funny that I thought I couldn't get into blogging when truly like that was something that I wanted to do and like from the jump yeah so yeah that kind of was a lot of my realization of like okay like we're gonna get into blocking we're gonna really do this but I also don't do anything like half ass so yeah. like I really wanted to make sure that I'm doing this and I'm posting frequently like I, mm -hmm. I was really scared that I was gonna just make a website everyone was gonna know I made a website but I wouldn't really do anything with it okay. and I know that a lot of people had done that in the past like no shade to them but that was something <laughs> that I really just, like didn't want for myself yeah, and I was exactly. like, if you're gonna do this you're gonna do this all or nothing yeah so I would say the best kind of advice for anybody that is like wanting to start a blog or kind of like how I started mm -hmm. was I I basically did a post Basically, I made my blog in kind of like January, February, mm -hmm. and I basically built it from then before posting in June. So I gave myself oh, like okay. a timeline, yeah, like yeah. six months, and I was like, okay, you're going to start building your website. You're going to see kind of like um, what content you can make and upload by June, which is mm -hmm. like summer. So like if I had time to like make a blog post, like it was kind of like summer oriented, yeah. I wanted to get into that rhythm of like, okay, it's done, like you're done work, you're at home, like maybe like figure out a blog post and like right. start brainstorming mm, um, okay, or okay. even like what kind of like posts you want on your blog, like kind of start building that. Mm -hmm. So I think that really helped me instead of just creating a blog in a week and like mm -hmm. uploading it, uh, really taking that time to like build the foundation of it and like have it kind of set. Um, and then also once I was like kind of like ready to make it go public, I also did like a launch like any company would kind of do. So mm -hmm. I remember like hooking up with a friend, we did kind of like a cool video that I could post on Instagram to be like, okay, this is live. I did some like promo pics that I could also have on my blog. And then I kind of like teased it as well. Like dropping something in two weeks, like dropping something next week, Ooh, dropping okay, something okay. tomorrow. Yeah, like to kind promos. of like make it official. Right. Cause like, again, I didn't want to half ass it. And yeah. if I'm going to do it wholeheartedly, I yeah. want it to look official and like be like that. Yeah. So that's kind of how I started. Um, and even then, uh, I'll never forget like one of my, like my big brother kind of like my inspiration. Mm -hmm. He also taught me like after getting into blogging, like also mention it more and like make it like your job. Mm -hmm. So like after I started blogging and I was into it a little, it started off as my like side hustle. Yeah, like my side thing. But then mm -hmm. after that, even um, like meeting new people, like I would be like, oh, like I work at this job, like whatever, whatever. Yeah, but yeah, he yeah. was like, no, like if you want to get into blogging, like be like, hey, I'm a blogger. Oh, so like meeting okay, people, yeah. I'd be like, hey, like I do this, but I also blog, like mm -hmm. and starting to get into that and be more comfortable with it. 
so yeah that's kind of like how i started it it's i started it in 2017 so mm. i think this summer will be like four years which is kind Jeez. of crazy Ooh. um because yeah even like the journey to get there was mm -hmm. like not very easy yeah um and even just like getting into the routine of making daily blog posts and yeah. stuff like that like it was difficult but yeah i feel like the one thing that i really that really like pushed me to keep going and stuff mm -hmm. was just getting excited to see my progression mm -hmm. so i think a lot of people kind of think about like oh like it's either too late for me or they want to really get there like really fast mm -hmm. but i think for me i was excited to flop Mm -hmm. almost or like i look back at like my first year having my blog and those posts and i'm like oh this is not content that i would put out now or mm -hmm. not very good but i didn't let that discourage me or like get frustrated if i wanted it to be like the best mm -hmm. i got excited for my progression and be like i can't wait to see where i am in a year yeah. and even like a year after my i launched my blog like it was way better and more of like the mindset I was at at that time, but like more professional, mm -hmm. like even little tweaks, like a search bar, like in my blog, because I had content for people to search, like mm -hmm. little things like that, like you pick up and you'll think of later on. But like, I'm happy that I didn't get frustrated um, that it might have not have been the best at launch mm -hmm. um, and didn't also discourage me from uploading it. Because, you know, mm -hmm. people like might even hold on to something because it's not perfect, right. you know. But yeah, I was happy that it wasn't perfect, but looking more forward to perfecting it as mm -hmm. I went on. So like in regards to like 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 where you are now in your career, like mm -hmm. where would you say your journey is taking you now in your career? Because you do a lot of photos and I see you, you know, driving uh, the Mazda the other day. <laughs> that was yeah. pretty dope. So like Thank you. how is that career path going through now since you kinda strayed away from blogging just a little bit in yeah. regards to now taking photos and becoming like that kind of Yeah, I think um I think low key 2020 was like a blessing kind of in disguise. Mm -hmm. um, I remember I really wanted um, to see what life would be like blogging full time. Yeah. And I, I, I didn't mean to bring on the pandemic, but I really <laughs> feel like having that quarantine period where I wasn't fully at work or like working um, and just that time at home to really blog and get into that stuff. I think that really helped me see what blogging could be full time mm -hmm. and it just gave me more of a drive to want it and yeah. not just have this as my side hustle, but have it as my full-time job, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like last year I really pushed myself and wanted to get into that more. And I think just like me putting in that work to do it more showed like to everybody else, like mm -hmm. everybody was able to see more of my content, see me really doing my thing. Um, and I think also like not just my audience, but other brands were able to see that too. Mm -hmm. So. I think that really helped. I always say that my blog kind of made me more like official, I guess. Like even though I already had enough following online and I was posting, yeah. I think just posting, like having a blog just made me more official to companies. Mm -hmm. um, so that definitely really helped. And yeah, I would just say that like where I'm going now, I just want to continue growing in my brand yeah. and really make not only a name for myself, but like build yeah. my name as a brand, you know? Right. So. I use like Matt R. Edwards and everything. Mm -hmm. So I would love for that to like maybe be a brand one day. Mm -hmm. um, but I think now what I'm thinking of is just continuing to grow my social media, continuing to grow my audience and my platform and my blog right. to have more of like a fashion, but also lifestyle based. Like I mm -hmm. like that I'm doing that as well. So like I'm a fashion guy, you can come yeah. to me and talk to me for that advice. Oh, I definitely will. But I also want to like talk about fitness on my platform. like possibly travel and food like if we ever mm. get to travel again <laughs> but like also like mental health and like things like that right i think it's important to have those different types of outlets so people yeah. see different sides of you like I, I don't want to just be known for fashion and mm -hmm. like obviously a dream of mine and like hopefully when the world opens up like i can go to fashion week like in I mean, new no. york or paris or like things like that like i would love to do that but i would also love to be like maybe on a panel talking about like men's or black men's mental health or like mm. doing something with fitness and like really showing people like how that started for me and things like that or just even talking about like movies yeah and things like that so yeah i hope that's kind of like where my platform is like headed and then once I have more of that following, I can maybe think of more endeavors. Like obviously people are always thinking of different 
outlets as well for themselves. Yeah, exactly. So like, I don't want to spoil anything. But I also <laughs> want to put things into fruition. For so sure. like, even like clothing, like if I were ever to get into something like that, or yeah. like candles, like something like that, that. like you know what I mean city. like that's something not easy but that's something that resonates with me so mm -hmm. anything that resonates with me um, is something that I would eventually want to have as an outlet for myself that's so, pretty yeah. dope man I can definitely see you as your own brand like since you are your own brand pretty mm -hmm. much like, but I can see that brand expanding and like you know with your words of like you know helping out like black men with mental health like that's mm -hmm. a huge thing that I feel like people tend to discard uh, you know we put a lot of other things forward but you know with your brand i really think that's possible and i wish you all the best with that appreciate which that, comes man. to my Thank last you. question i would pretty much ask but with all that being said and like where your journey has come to and you know you being your own brand and what it is um you know because i do like the fact that you're not only looking as your brand as like you know a fashion guy just come to me into vlog about life and stuff but more life in, in the sense of mental health and fitness which mm -hmm. is going to help a lot of people and i think that's where i think that's going to be such a great relief for a lot of people and yourself mm -hmm. um, my last question for you would be like you know someone that's gone through the challenges and experiences in your life like if there's someone out there that's kind of in that same kind of gap field where they don't know where their passion is and like you know it took them maybe like three to four years to find a passion like what would you say like inspirational words or messages you want to give to that person about you know kind of finding your passion or you don't know where it is or it's going to take you forever a long time like what would you say to that person like kind of struggling to find their passion yeah i feel like the best advice i could probably give is honestly just start i know that sounds so cliche and i think that is something that people are always timid to do but just start and also brainstorm like how you're going to start things like that um, I feel like there's so many outlets online that are there to help you um, if there's something that you're looking to get into, whether it's a YouTube tutorial or even like a website like Skillshare. There's so many ways that you could learn to perfect what you want to get into. So I don't necessarily think that you need to like stop everything you're doing to now go to school and like do that. Even if it's like a side thing that you want to do or you're already kind of have a idea of how to do but you just need more of a foundation definitely just look online and start um, and yeah I would also say the best advice that I also gave myself that I spoke about before is just think and look forward to your progression instead of like kind of being timid or like oh I should like rushing the process I feel like a lot of people kind of rush the process of where they want to be where they are to where they want to be but it really is a journey and it's something that you can't rush because if you kind of rush it, you also won't get better at it. Um, so yeah, I think the best advice that I kind of gave myself or that I could also give to other people is just be more excited about your progression. Like, like even your progression being, I can't wait to see what it looks like six months from now, a year from now, three years from now, like get excited about that. And then also take that time to be like, okay, like this is where I am a year from now. This is kind of like the growth that I've had. What can I change or what needs to be changed within that year that I just had? And I think that will help a lot of people, especially like our generation, like our young generation that kind of mm -hmm. um, compares themselves a lot to like other people. And mm -hmm. we see like even celebrities that are like our age, like right. Richard Cardi B's our age. And I'm like, <laughs> how? Right. But again, just like kind of not comparing yourself and just being excited about your progression mm -hmm. in your lane you right know? that's pretty dope yeah. man. and beautiful words from an extremely beautiful person bro wow I wow that. I, again <laughs> you're gassing me so much you can't do that to a cancer man <laughs> you cannot do that man the cancers but, man yeah but i appreciate you having me here on your platform and on for your sure, outlet bro. Uh, yeah, so thank you for having me. Oh, man, thank you for coming. I appreciate that, man. Just let the people know where they can find you, social media-wise. Yeah, yeah, you can find me um, online. Uh, I don't want to, like, gas myself, but you could definitely Google me. Uh, <laughs> Matt R. Edwards. Uh, my main platform is my blog, uh, mattredwards.com. If you're looking for any fashion advice, lifestyle, tips, anything like that, or hey, if you just want to listen to a dope playlist, um, you can find that on my website, mattredwards.com. On social media, my biggest one, I guess, is like Instagram. So mm -hmm. that is mattredwards there. You can find me on Twitter, mattredwards.com. <laughs> YouTube, mattredwards. Are you seeing a trend here? It's, <laughs> it's mattredwards.com. So that's where you can find me online. That's so dope. 
dope, man. And you know, me, it's just, it's JJ. It's pretty simple. There's a lot of A's and a lot of Y's, but you know, <laughs> the logos are there. Shout out to everyone for coming to and listening. I appreciate you all. Again, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the videos. It helps me. I love the support so far. And again, thank y'all. Hey.